marketing. I saw a lot of frustration on the Twitterverse today about how, oh my God, this down moves, it was out of the blue. It, it really wasn't. Um, and the other thing too, is when you look at the markets, and I love this quote, if you're an Abraham Hicks fan, when you believe something is hard, the universe demonstrates the difficulty. And when you believe something is easy, the universe demonstrates the ease. And so what we're just gonna be talking about here is let's demonstrate the ease of trading in this market. So um, taking advantage of amateur hour, uh, this was in the Wall Street Journal last week, and amateurs pile into 24 hour, hour, 24 hour options, it's just gambling. Uh, more and more of this stuff's coming online, which is fantastic because it's bringing more and more money into the markets. And it's small enough accounts that, you know, the big guys can't really afford to go after them, but it's perfect for us. Rookie speculators are trying to strike it big on short-term investments. Uh, that often act like a lottery ticket. And this is fantastic because what happens is a lot of times these guys are, you know, they're buying out of the money calls or puts on the SPX for a dollar. And most of the time it goes to zero. And sometimes they might, you know, get one that goes to $5, you know, or more. And it's that once in a while that really keeps them going and willing to invest more and more uh, and more. So, uh, that's been, and so it, it becomes kind of this buy and pray mentality. So if you've seen, you know, if you watch people in uh, Las Vegas, I've done it before, been there before where I'm going to bed and I'll see someone at the slot machines. I sleep, you know, eight hours, have breakfast in my room, go back downstairs. And that same person is down, down there uh, looking pretty worse for wear, but hoping to hit that jackpot. And that's really the mentality we have in this current market. All right. So, so far this, this week, we've had $300,000 days and just kind of want to show you real quick how it worked with the setups here. So uh, this was today. And today we had, these are, uh, we'll talk more about what these are, but these are the daily quant pivots. And of course I didn't do anything here. This is waiting for the Fed number to come out. And we got down to what's called uh, L1 here and we kind of bounced. And once we broke through this, uh, then it becomes a magnet down to L2. And so at this point, and we posted these in the room, we bought puts on the Qs, puts on the spiders, sold some call credit spreads on NDX, on SPX. Uh, some of those we closed out, um, but today was like right at $101,000 trading futures, uh, things like that too. Some of the stuff I held overnight, so um, it's not in the bank just yet. Some of it is in the bank, uh, but that just kind of shows you kind of how clean the path is. And here's the futures. Uh, S&P futures, kind of the same thing. Just, you know, we come down here, we get a little bit of a bounce, and then you just walk down and close right at H2. Those are levels, okay, that we want to be aware of and take advantage of because of why? Because that's what the algos are trading and that's what they're looking at. So we want to know that. Uh, this was on Tuesday, and Tuesday was kind of fun. So for Tuesday, um, there's this big kind of drip down into what? L1. And we kind of hung out, hung out, hung out, hung out, hung out. And then we got the turn and the confirmation by the quick kits. We'll talk more about that. Uh, that was a long signal. Uh, caught some futures, S&Ps, uh, spreads. You know, it's ironic now is, you know, I used to love trading Tesla. It's so boring now. Um, I, you know, this, I, it, it's so much easier, I think, with these levels to do things like with options on SPX essentially taking the opposite side of the amateurs versus trying to like buy Tesla. So I know that's probably the last thing you'd ever expect coming out of my mouth, but I, you know, I just, I'm kind of not even trading stocks, options on stocks anymore because it's, I don't know, it's just not as interesting um, as the indexes and we get a real nice map here on the indexes. And then uh, Monday was a huge pain in the ass, but it was a great example of how this works. And so I remember this on Monday and we had this move into daily, um, H1, and that's the level there. And we just kind of hung out here, but we hung out here for a long time. And I sold credit spreads and I was sitting there for four hours. Okay. So normally it doesn't take that long for it to happen. But as I was watching, I could see that it would start coming down and I can see all these different tools that we have working together. I could see like, okay, well, it's starting to come down and I can see what's going on here and, and all that kind of fun stuff. And then, you know, and then here we are like another hour later. And then finally, you know, we're getting confirmation that we're rolling over here on the multiple time frame rotation tools and that uh, L1's holding like a champ and, um, you know, we're, and we're seeing us, we're, we're falling here. And so finally, it's starting to show signs of progress after a long, 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 long time. Uh, and then boom, we come down from this L1 level back to the opening level, which is kind of how that works. And, you know, bada boom, uh, bada boom. And then we pinned like right at 4450. 
And so that was also good for uh, on the S&Ps, um, catching that short. And then these call credit spreads, we sold in the money, the 4450s, 4465s, and that was great as well. And so, you know, again, and you know, not having to look at a bunch of stocks or anything like that, just focusing on the indexes. Now, that was the big account. I'm also doing this on a smaller account. Um, and now by small, it's relative. Uh, my small account is 100K. Uh, but on this, my goal is to make one to three percent a day, so that's one to three thousand dollars. And on this, it was one trade. Um, you know, sold a call credit spread for six forty five, bought it back, and twenty six hundred bucks. So again, try not to overcomplicate it. Not worried about catching every move. I just want the money. You know, at the end of the day, cash flow solves a lot of problems. And so I really just want to focus on extracting the cash into my account and then, you know, wiring it out at the end of the week and just utilizing a simple strategy to do that. So the new reality here is that new and experienced traders and institutions are flocking to zero days to expiration. And somebody was even concerned. They're like, gosh, John, is this, are they going to take these away? The answer is no. Anything like this, it's, it's, producing a lot of revenue for the exchanges. So absolutely, and it's producing a lot of revenue for trading firms. So no, it's not going away. If anything, they're going to find more ways to create uh, more zero days to expiration kind of thing. So if that's, if anything, it's going to increase. So, so now we're seeing that, you know, we've got a, a large percentage of newer traders, you know, the meme traders, uh, they've got this addiction to the quick fix. They can buy an option and just, you know, hope and pray that it works. And, you know, they're also doing this with stocks like NVIDIA, Tesla and Apple and Microsoft. But, you know, really this, there's this attraction to the zero days to expiration and it's just creating these huge opportunities like that. So combined, all this activity causes a lot of fake breakouts and breakdowns, which is the oldest trick in the book. This is something they used to do in the pits all the time and now they're able to do it now electronically. Um, and then sometimes it can lead to big moves. And so we always want to be aware of that as well. So we want to understand this dynamic. And of course, as traders kind of in the know, we want to exploit it. And sometimes this will mean going with the amateurs very rarely, only about 6% of the time. But then 94% of the time, it'll be made, it means taking the opposite side of their trades in a very systematic way. Not, you know, oh, should we do it or not? It's yes, yes, we should, or no, we shouldn't. So, so the idea with this is what is a sandbox? And the sandbox is a level or levels where prices are contained uh, 90, about 95% of the time. And then what happens is if price pushes outside of those levels, the machines come in and attack it. Now, ironically, when price pushes outside of those levels, it also attracts a lot of amateurs. Like, oh my gosh, you know, it's 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 getting ready for a move. And so when price comes out, boom, the algos, the algos, the algos, the algos, the algos. And so we just simply want to be trading on the same side as the algos. I visited one of these places. This is a $14 million computer. Each one of these is like a, a desktop. And so it's something like, I don't know, like 900 desktops, the equivalent, or probably more than that now. And it's all run off of this laptop. And it's just these AI. Um, the It's just, this, you know, it's just all AI. They don't even have, uh, they don't even have a human doing any trades. They're just letting the computer do everything. So when you think about when you get into a trade and you're all emotional and you're like, oh my gosh, did I get out too soon? You're trading against machines that don't do that. And it's really important to understand that. So, so what are we talking about here, basically, is just this idea that if you look at these prices, it looks kind of like, oh, it's kind of random, we're up or down, you know, what's going on here? Boom. This is what the machines are looking at. And the machines are looking at specific moments in time like this, where it's like, okay, the machines know that there's only um, a 5% chance that price will push above and close above this level. So they're going to, you know, machines are going to step in. Same thing down here. Only a 5% chance we're going to get below that level. Only a 5% chance we're going to get below that level. Okay. That doesn't mean it never happens. It does happen 5% of the time. But most of the time, you know, it's a pretty, you know, pretty safe bet. So boom, boom, boom. So we can see here just all these levels that where the algos essentially turn on. Okay. And we just want to be aware of that. And what am amateur hour dictates Um, sorry to hacking up a lung there. And what, um, and what this dictates is that, you know, amateurs will get excited and see like, oh my God, the S&Ps are taking off and they're going to buy these calls, right? Oh my God, the S&Ps are taking off. We're going to buy these calls and we are just going to be selling call credit spreads. You know, I have this new saying now, it's like, you know, 
mama said, you never lose money selling call credit spreads at H2. And I mean, by God, that's been that's been true. So so it's just little things like that that we don't want to be aware of. All right. So what are the quant pivots? Um, just real quick, because I know some of you saw this last week, but basically it's not like floor trader pivots where it's the high low close divided by three. Right. It's algos going back in time and saying, okay, what's the appropriate levels for the stock today? You'll notice here that to the downside on Tesla at this particular time, the level where the bots would get activated was lower, was smaller than the upside. Okay. Cause this is taking into account why, well, the volatility of the stock is to the upside. So we're going to be more aggressive about buying the dip and less aggressive about shorting. We're going to give it a little bit more room before we do that. So it does that automatically on the S&Ps at this particular moment in time is the opposite. <clears throat> the odds are the odds are that if it was going to push lower, uh, a move to the downside would be about twice as big as a move to the upside. OK, and it takes that into account, which is great. So we're not just randomly buying or selling at, you know, predetermined levels of high low close divided by three. It's going back and analyzing the price, whatever you're looking at, and putting the appropriate levels in place. And then that's what the machines are using as well. All right. So same thing there. And then on top of that, they have, um, so they have the levels. And then from there, a one standard deviation beyond that. And those are the really awesome ones. That's what happened today, like with Caterpillar and a couple things like that. So when that happens, we just want to know about it because it's such, it's a golden opportunity that we do not want to pass up. So here's Caterpillar, and today Caterpillar is off and running. Oh, my gosh. You know, 281, 283, 284, and it got up here to H2. And how many people up here were just scrambling to buy calls, right? Well, there's only a 5% chance that it's going to close above H2. So at the very least, you can sell call credit spreads, or you could buy puts. And, of course, the market fell today. And not only did it give up all its gains, but it went beyond that as well. And this is just a great example. And even though I'm mostly focused on S&Ps and, &Ps and on, the, on the NASDAQ, you keep an eye out for stocks like this that are hitting the extreme levels uh, because the odds of that holding are, are very rare. And what I like, you know, there's a saying here, if you're playing a poker game and you look around the table and you can't tell who the sucker is, it's you. And anyone that got excited and bought calls here is a, is essentially playing poker at a table where they don't understand the rules or they don't understand that they're the sucker. And what's nice about this is you can overlay it on the chart and know what's happening. You can know that, oh, okay, that's, they're trying to get the suckers in here. Awesome. So I'm going to take the opposite side of that. Um, now, <clears throat> the other thing too, is when we combine this with quick hits, we can get a sense of if it's going to hold or not. And so, you know, we come down to the level here and it's like, all right, well, you know, are we going to hold this level or are we going to go down to the extreme level? And that's where we want to see these things when they start to turn like that, they're starting to show the process that we're ready to go higher. And this was the one um, where it was a very quick move. You know, you sell a put credit spread and bada boom, bada bing, and you're, and you're good to go. And, um, yeah, actually, we talked about today's SPX at the very beginning of this. But since you're, I see people have come on. Let's go back here and we'll talk about it. Oh, my gosh, this is taking too long. Sorry. Um, this was today. So today, of course, didn't do anything. This is the NASDAQ. Same thing with the S&P. Here's the S&Ps. Didn't do anything until the number came out. And then, you know, boom, boom. And then we went straight down to L2. And that was, you know, this was a great $100,000 day uh, just trading the levels like that. So you can see everything just kind of rolling over there and stuff like that, too. So it's pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, so I'll show you how I've got all these set up now and, and how they're all mapped out if you've already got these. And if not, how you can get them. Um, okay, so that was the quant pivots. And of course, if you're not, or if you're not sure with quick hits, uh, that's basically taking fast MACDs and other things from six different time frames and importing them all. So you don't have to look at a bunch of different charts. So here on this five minute chart of the S&Ps, I can see the five, the 15, the 30, that one hour, the, you know, the two hour, all those. And so when they're all turning out, you know, we come down here into guess what, L2. 
And we just want to have, you know, we just, we just want to make sure that this isn't one of the 5% of the times where it's going to keep on going. Then it's like, all right, great. We're turning. Now I have the confidence to sell a put credit spread by a call, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Same thing here. It's like, okay, we're down here. Oh, great. You know, we're turning. We've got the confidence. And that, so that's how you're combining the quant pivots with the quick hits. So by themselves, look, you know, you get up here to L2. Uh, H2 in this case, the odds are 95% that it's going to hold and, uh, you know, we fall. But if you want that little extra, you know, that little extra like, oh, good, we're starting to roll here. So it's not one of those that just keeps on going. That's what it's for. And so it kind of gives that little extra confidence boost. But the other thing is, is it also helps you stay in. Like, okay, we're coming down here. Is it going to pause here? No, there's no turns at all. So it helps you stay in the trade even longer. And that's one of the things I hear people talk about. It's like, oh my God, I got out too early. Today, we had a lot of that. Oh gosh, I got out too early. The S&Ps fell another 20 points. There was no reason to get out. You know, if you were watching this, it was just, it was just a free fall. Um, and it was, you know, it was a sight to behold. Um, another, you know, and of course, another one of my favorite uh, ones here as well is when you get, um you know, things like, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of moving up here and trading sideways. And a lot of times people complain like, oh my gosh, the market's moving sideways. Uh, there's no money to be made, but when the market's trading sideways, okay. And then you've got like, this is the eight EMA from the 15 minute, you know, we're importing in and what's continuing to rise like that. Then you just wait for the quick hits to turn higher. And that's when you buy calls, sell, put credit spreads, et cetera. But the nice thing of course, about selling put credit spreads is you can just collect theta all day. And so it's just things like that, that, um, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just really awesome like that. And this particular one, you know, we're talking about, okay, making 30 K in 19 minutes. This was one where we came up to H2 early in the day. And this is my, by far my favorite trade. Okay. We open up on, this is like last Wednesday or something and we open up and we're here and everybody's getting excited. Okay. Sell a put credit spread. Uh, sell a call credit spread, buy puts, and you can see 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 minutes. It's sucking people in like, oh my God, yeah, we're going to go to 45, 50. And then boom, that's the most common thing that's happening in this market. It happens all the time. And this just gives you the map for it because you know it's like, oh my God, this thing's going to explode. No, it's not. No, it's not. Not at H2. It's got to come back. And that's the gift that keeps on giving. And that's the trade I look for every day. That was, you know, 19 minutes, uh, sold the out of the money call, uh, 25 bucks wide, you know, sold it at 545, 19 minutes later, bought it back at 242, good for 30 grand. And that's, you know, last I checked, you can make a living, um, make a living on that. And that's, and that's it. That was the only trade I did that day. I didn't care what Tesla did. I don't care what anything else is doing. Like I made my nut and I'm done. I want to go play with my kids, do some yoga, try to catch a zebra, you know, whatever. And so I, you know, you got to figure out part of this is like, you know, when you get into trading, it's like, oh my God, I got to catch every move and I got to, you know, blah, blah, blah. But at some point, you know, you, you just have a business. It's a business. It's a great business. It's a, it's a great business. If you understand that you don't have to work long hours, you don't have to study a bunch of charts. You don't have to, you know, make notes all weekend. You just have a system that you follow and you wake up and you follow the damn system. And that's it. And then once, if you've got a goal, you know, and, and typically a good goal, I, I think is one to 3% of whatever you're trading a day. So if you're trading a $10,000 account to, you know, one to 300 bucks a day. And I know that may not sound as exciting. Of course, there are going to be days when you can make more than that, but it adds up over time so quickly. Keep in mind, 1% a day, that's 5% a week. That's 1200% a year. If you're not wiring it out. My best year in 2020, um, that was an, a, that was a 1200% year. I mean, that was an amazing year, but 1% a day gets you there. So don't, um, you don't get too caught up on huge wins. It's nice when they happen. You know, there's typically, you know, one day a month where you get a really big move, but most of the time, you know, it's, it's pretty contained. And with the advent of zero DTE, it's even more contained. So the key is just to wait for these one or two opportunities that happen every day. Have the discipline to wait for it. Don't piddle away your your money on stupid setups, and just make the money and you know go go do something else that you enjoy. So, you know, yep, there's gonna be the rare days when the market explodes, and when the class I go through, I'm gonna talk about what to look for in some key internals to kind of be able to identify that. But it is the exception, not the rule. 
without a number, without a daily goal. We fall prey to FOMO, fear of missing out. Got to chase this, got to chase that. We chase and overtrade. Uh, you know, like dogs, all you know, like uh, all dogs that trace, tra- chase cars eventually get run over. Got to try to catch all the moves. What about this? What about that? Uh, giving back well-earned profits due to lack of discipline. You know, make money in the morning, give it away in the afternoon, and on and on and on. So I just want to grab the cash, be at peace, and then go to the gym. That's That's my goal. When you focus on you, you grow. When you focus on shit, shit grows. I love that quote. Um, so what's your number? So if it's a thousand bucks a day, how are you going to make it? Is it going to be one on the SPX? Is it going to be one lot to make 10 points? Maybe two lots and make five points or 10 lots and make one point. So obviously the larger size, the less market movement is needed, but you're taking on more risk. So I found a good rule of thumb is to start with one SPX contract per $20,000 or one SPY contract per $2,000, and then have the flexibility to add to it if warranted, going up to one contract per 10K. So that means essentially you're starting off with a half size position. And you know if it goes up to the next level, so if you do that at say L1, and if it goes to L2, great, you can add the next half position, right? Uh, and then obviously you have a stop loss and then boom, and there you go. So, um, yeah, uh, Alex is just asking, hey, if we've already got both of these, where can I get the last chart settings? I'm about to review that here in the next couple slides. So, and so for me personally, I don't want to scalp, you know, I don't want to, you know, day trade the S&Ps 20 times a day. I, I used to do that when I was in my 20s. Um, and I think that's fine if you're in your 20s and at the end of the day, you still have energy. Uh, I ain't my 20s anymore. So I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't, it's, it's a lot of energy expended for the same amount of money as doing one SPX trade. So I'd rather be patient and, um, you know, do fewer trades and make more money. Uh, this is a system for people who are fine being patient, waiting for one or two high probability moments a day. You know, trading is ultimately a waiting game and waiting games are the hardest games you'll ever play as they go against our tendency to want things fast. So I wanted a system where it would be easy to wait. And sometimes it's not easy to do that. I also want to isolate high probability moments in time where I can put on a large trade for a short period of time and make solid cash. So I'm here to make money by exploiting what's working now, not my preferred way. And basically that's taking the opposite side of the amateur traders in a very systematic fashion. Um, so the other thing here too that I found is that you know, I'm getting, I, I'll get in the room and I'll start, oh, what, about, what do you think about this stock? And what do you think about the stock? And, and the answer is I don't. I really don't care. I want to focus on making money on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And yeah, maybe there's a day when there's some crazy moves or something like happening, but I really just want to narrow my focus and eliminate distractions. And the more distractions I can eliminate with audacity and ruthlessness, the more money I'm going to make. Okay. And that's, that's the end of it. Uh, some people were asking today, like, why aren't you in the room at 930 anymore? Because I'm eliminating distractions, right? And answering questions from a thousand people can be a distraction at the prime time of the day. However, that said, I'm still going to post my trades. I'm still going to post my trades, um, but I'm going to do it in a way that works for me. And if I can focus on what works for me, that's going to help everybody else as well, because it's like, oh, okay, let's, I can focus and I can be clear and I can post and, and yada, yada, yada. So it's just great. I love this quote. Don't wake up in the same terrible place 10 years from now just because you're terrified of what needs to be done today. So if there's any changes you need to make in your life to make sure your trading is on point, then, you know, what are you waiting for? So a common question I get asked is, do you watch the SPX or the S? And the answer is yes. Okay. And that also applies to NDX uh, or NQ. And so let's talk about the chart settings on this. Now, the thing is, of course, is they move the same, but the futures move nearly 24 hours while the S&P or the SPX and the NDX, uh, they're confined to 6.5 hours. So the same tools don't work on both of them. And this is something I've just noticed over time. And so this is how I set up cash. So by cash, what I mean is SPX and NDX. So I've got a five minute chart here. I've got a five minute chart here. And then I've got a two minute chart here. So on those first five minute charts, I have the daily quant pivots and the two hour quant pivots, okay? And then I've got quick hits. And again, look what the quick hits do is like say, all right, great, we've come down here and we're rotating higher, awesome. We've come up here, we're rotating lower. Okay, fantastic. 
Um, so five minute chart. I got the daily and the two hour quant pivots. I've got quick hits. I have the bars color coded to the 20 minute rotation. And I love that because, you know, if you're sitting here and say you're selling call credit spreads, once this turns red, you're now on the same side as the 20 minute rotation. That's a great sign. Okay. It's a great sign. You don't want to fight that too long. You know, if you chase up here and you buy it and all of a sudden you see this get red, you know, you were a sucker, first of all, because you bought it here. But that's okay. We all make mistakes. Just recognize it. This is the like, don't be a dumbass kind of a tool. Recognize it and get out. That's fine to make a mistake, but it's not fine to stay married to your mistake. On this five minute chart, this is where, as part of the Quick Hits tools, we're able to import from higher time frames things like Keltner channels and key moving averages. So, on here, I've got on the five minute chart, I got the two. Um, I've got that's a typo. I've got the 3.0 and 2.0 ATR hourly Keltner, Keltner channels. I've got the 8 EMA imported from the 15 minute chart, and the 21 EMA imported in from the 30 minute chart. And again, these are imported from the hourly charts. Um, I got the major voodoo lines on there because I want to know what those are. I'm looking at 10X bars. Uh, I like, if you guys are familiar with Sam's Hilo Pro, it actually works really good on this as well. Uh, also, uh, Ruggie's HMPR, if you're, if you're, if you're using that. Uh, Squeeze Pro down here. And then on these tabs, I just have the distances from the key moving average. So like if you ever see price get like 1% away from the 21 EMA on the 30 minute chart, oftentimes you're poised for a reversal. And then on the two minute chart, I'm really just looking at the key times of day. We've mapped out the key times of the day where markets are likely to have a reversal. Uh, and then I've got kind of Henry's modified ATR trailing stop on there as well. All right. So that's the cash and then the micro voodoo lines. And on this, I like to watch candlesticks. Now, that's cash. Now, the, the futures aren't completely different, but they are a little different. So in the futures, and again, whether it's ES or NQ, uh, I do have daily. Okay. So I've got the five-minute chart, but I've also got the four-hour quant pivots. And again, S&Ps trade 24 hours. The two hours isn't quite enough, so I stretched it out to four. Some people I know use the two, and that's fine too. But the four, it's not hugely different, but I found it, it helps. I got the quick hits, so I can say, oh, yes, with confidence that this is going to hold. Uh, the bars are coded to the 20-minute rotation, just like the SPX. On the futures, I'm also looking at volume. They don't have that on the, on the, on the cash indexes. And then the RF Pro. And then on this five minute, same thing, except no Keltner channels. Keltner channels, the hourly Keltner channels are worthless on futures. Instead, I'm looking at VWAP, and then I'm looking at the two standard deviation levels on the VWAP. Otherwise, everything else is the same. So I found that super helpful. So, um, so the main difference is there. And by the way, on the Saturday class, I'm going to go through all of this in detail of exactly how I've got this set up now. And, you know, of course, you know, you guys can have copies of the layouts and, and stuff like that, too. So, um, all right, we talked about all that. Now, the other thing I have, and this is more, you know, quote unquote, big picture, right? We're not looking at weekly charts now. Um, so the and so this is the other one, the one I have set up on the futures is we've got the S&Ps and the NASDAQ futures, okay, 30-minute charts. Now, I got the daily, I've got the key moving averages imported in the daily 5, 8, and 21 EMAs, okay? So there's the 21 EMA, there's the 5 EMA, and there's the 8. Price spends a lot of time dancing between those levels, so I want to know where they are, all right? I got the weekly quant pivots, okay, bigger moves. That's the weekly open, right? If we get down to a weekly L1, that's a big deal. I got the major voodoo lines. I got the daily 2.0 and 1.0 Keltner channel bars. Okay. Looking at the 10X bars, we got the quick hits, yada, yada, yada. This I found is really great for I can kind of, and then this is the variable 21 EMA. So again, on the Saturday class, I'll lay all this out. You know, if you, you know, the, the, a lot of these tools, you know, you can get copies of um, some of you, if you already have RAF Pro, obviously, um, uh, that's something that if you don't have it, you'd have to get it. But if you already have it, you know, you can obviously set it up like that. So I found that this is incredibly, incredibly useful. So my income plan right now is I'm trading two main accounts, a personal seven figure account where my goal is one to 3% a day. Um, you know, the last couple of days have been five, per, you know, four and 5% days, you know, hundred K days, uh, which has been fun. But, you know, my goal is like uh, ideally 25 to $45,000 a day. And I know, look, when I was, it probably sounds like an obscene amount of money to some of you if you're trading like a $10,000 account or a $5,000 account. 
over time, okay, over time, money is you be learn it's just a it's just a number. You know, it's not it's just percentages. So two percent of a ten thousand dollar account is you know two hundred bucks. Ten percent of a two million dollar, I mean one percent of a ten thousand dollar account is two hundred bucks. One percent of a two million dollar account is twenty thousand dollars. Right. So as you build up your capital, you're still going for the same percents. Okay, but the you know the amount of money is getting larger. So. Trading is a skill and the initial skills, you want to get that capital account built up because then you have to, then you can take less risk and make a very comfortable amount of money. And okay, I got zebras I got to feed, um, you know, I got things like that. So, and I've got other things that I want to do and I like to buy rare coins and stuff like that. And if I'd stop doing that, then maybe I wouldn't need to trade and make one to 3% a day on a larger account, but I enjoy it. I actually really like it. I get a kick out of it. Uh, it's pretty cool being able to push a few buttons. And at the end of the day, it's like, wow, you know, made some money. So I like it. Um, and in the gold room, the ones I'm posting is off of a hundred thousand dollar account. And so then I just post the quantities in there. And that's, you know, we did that today. We got puts on the spiders and the cues and, and all that fun stuff. Um, these tools have made my trading life a lot easier. And that's what I'm going for. I don't need hard. I've already done hard. I want to do easy. Uh, I trade more in the morning when the moves are happening, but the closes are fun too. Today's close was awesome. Um, and you know, we can also look at pins and stuff like that at the close. Uh, the setups are super clear. Like they're not, there's no ambiguity, which I love. It's like, well, is it up or down? You know, I don't know. Uh, I can sell same day expiration credit spreads on SPX and take on a lot less risk than a directional trade while making the same potential profit. Okay. little secret here. Instead of buying one call, you know, and hoping the market goes up, sell three at the money, put credit spreads. It's the same risk to reward ratio. And your odds of making money on this are like five times higher. Okay. It's just, you know, little secret to trading. I can focus on hitting monetary targets each day instead of through, instead of sitting through four days of moves against me. So, you know, if anybody bought calls on Caterpillar today, and now they're seeing that the NAS, the S and P's are down more after hours, you know, they're just like, shitting bricks right whereas we just follow the tape and uh you know we got some shorts overnight hope you know if the market gaps down awesome we'll take profits if not it's not the end of the world so this is all i look at these days i used to have i used to have you know oh my god i got what's what are all these stocks doing what's you know tesla doing what's nvidia doing i don't care i just this is so much easier where i just like you know what up here I'm going to look at SPX cash. Okay. And these are those charts that I showed you earlier. And then over here, let's look at the NDX. Okay. I can see where, you know, where are we on the Bollinger Bands and the Voodoo lines and the quant pivots. And then down here, let's look at the ES and the NQ. Because in this, again, the question is like, well, are you watching SPX? Or are you watching the ES? The answer is yes, because the S&Ps trade 24 hours. Now, I actually like the levels on SPX better. But sometimes you get better signals like on the quant pivots and, and things like that, too. So I've just found that watch it. There's an advantage. You get an edge over watching both. So traders are not born with the patience gene. They have to learn it mostly through brutal lessons. Trading is merely a game of the patient taking money from the impatient. And a lot of trading I found over the years, just finding the right balance of patience and determination. And what I love about this strategy is that it forces patience because the setup is so clear. And then there's the determination to follow it because the rewards are so high when you do. And, uh, I, and I love that. So determination, patience, and courage are the only things needed to improve any situation. And then a day, and, I, and this is something I always got to re-remind myself, our job is not to like catch every move. Like, oh my God, did you see crude oil? Did you catch it? Uh, I didn't see crude oil. What about this? And what do you think this is going to do next year? Who cares? The only job is that you get an equity curve that goes from the lower left of your screen to the upper right. Nothing else matters. And the longer I do this, the more I'm convinced of that. Uh, I had a mentor once tell me, if you have to talk about if you have to talk to more than three people about the same problem, you don't want help, you want attention. And I just encourage everyone if, you know, if over the years you're like, you keep talking about the same issues that you're having, you know, this is a way to address them. I mean, this is a pretty simple trading system that's pretty powerful and it gets you on the right side of the tape. So the secret is to be able to go in with the flow of what is happening and not what you think might or should happen. And it's also important to control the emotions of fear and greed. And this helps you do that automatically because that always causes people to do the wrong thing at the wrong time. So just take the emotion out of it and you're just going to trade with the machines. And I love this. I, um, 
Yeah, if you're on here, I did. I just didn't. I didn't ask your permission to uh, use your. So I just blocked out your name here. I said, "Hey, John, I've seen some of your recent promos for the quant pivots, and you know, I use the daily and the two hour. These levels are golden, eighty to ninety percent of the time. Don't promote it too hard." So, you know, this is this is the last time we're doing a webinar on this. I'm gonna do a class Saturday. You know, everybody else who was not on here and they don't get it, I, I don't care. You know, the people that are on here are meant to be here, and meant to improve their trading. Everyone else will just take their money from them, and, and that's that's cool with me. Um, so what we're doing on here is um, on Saturday, the 23rd. Now, obviously, I know some of you already have these tools, and some of you don't. If you don't have these tools, it's the most no-brainer investment in your trading that you're ever going to make. So we'll get to that in a second. And then if you do have the tools, um, uh, obviously, you know you can get you know get the new settings and stuff like that. Uh, but if you still want to do the class with me to understand how I'm using these tools now, uh, there's a, a discounted rate for that because obviously you already have the tools. So we're going to do a class this Saturday from 12 to 4. And then on Thursday, September 28th and Thursday, October 12th, I like to give time in there so you get some time to do this on your own. Then we can come back together and trade together. We will do this some, some live trading together. All right. So what's going on here? So... If you've never seen any of this, you're like, wow, those quant pivots look really cool. There's a quant pivots package. And that's, you know, that's the lines. And you get the quant pivots indicator. And then you're going to get the strategy class that we'll do on Saturday and two days of live trading. Now, now you may already have you may already have the quant pivots and you're like, what's quick hits? Okay, and you, you know, you want quick hits. Great. That's the quick hits package where you get, and the quick hits comes with a lot of stuff. There's three different rotation tools. There's all these other tools that you can import from higher time frames. Uh, all, I mean, there's like eight things that come with this, which is great. And then of course you get the strategy class and that. Now, if you have neither of these, there's this great deal. So normally, so normally it's $2,000 for both of those. So you can see it's 897 for the quant pivots, 1197 quick, quick hits, or you can get both for 1247. So basically, it's like a hey, if you want, if you're here and you're seeing this and you want to get both, um, it's like an extra fifty bucks uh, over the quick hits package, and you get both. So with that, you'd get the quant pivots indicator, the quick, all the quick hit stuff. And again, there's like eight things that come with that: the strategy class, and then two days of live trading. Now, if you've already got this, um, if you're signed into the website, what will happen is when you go to this link, you're going to see a different page. It'll be lower prices because you've already got the tools. So I think, you know, if you want to do, um, you know, you're like, hey, this is cool. And I want to see what you're doing now with these tools. Awesome. You know, it's not 1197. It's, it's, I, I think it's like, I don't know, half, half that or something like that. But that way you can actually participate in the strategy class and the live trading. And we can, you know, you can learn how I'm using this stuff uh, together, which which is fantastic. All right, the other thing too, okay, that's that, we just talked about it. Um, blah, 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 we talked about that. We looked at that. Um, okay, yeah, so I think at some point too, you might have the ability to add this into your cart. I don't know exactly how it's set up, uh, but we're gonna be doing a live workshop in Orlando uh, at the end of October. Um, I think it's the night of the 27th and then all day on the 28th. And um, you can add this on for 397 bucks. So I think that's a, that's a great deal. And, you know, we're all going to hang out there, play poker together, um, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. So that'll be fun. And then if you want to really, well, if you want to play poker um, and go to the cocktail reception, it's the VIP one. So you just want to be sure to do that. All right, more info, you can call us, you can email us, support at simplertrading.com. And um, I've, I'd also like to mention this too, we do have this deal with PayPal that if you're like, well, I love this idea, but uh, I don't know, my credit card is kind of, it's like maxed right now and I can't do it. This is really a great investment in yourself. We do have the ability with PayPal where you can do the PayPal payment plan and do no payments for six months and no interest for six months. And then, you know, after six months, I think they start charging interest. But we've had people, you know, get the tools. They start getting into a trading rhythm. They're able to pay it off with their trading profits. Obviously, you know, I can't guarantee that's going to happen for you. I don't know how emotional you get. You know, I don't know if you have the discipline to follow your plan or not. Uh, but we've seen it happen. And, and I think that's really awesome. All right. 
Okay, so um, I'd be happy to answer questions. And, you know, again, just want to emphasize, if you already have the tools, um, just log into the site. And then when you go here, you're going to see a different set of prices because you don't need um, the indicators, right? But if you want to do the Saturday class and the live trading with me, okay, and, and join us in Orlando, there's a whole awesome you know, lower price package for you guys if you're interested in that. All right. Yeah. So Benjamin, um, where is the option if you already have quick hits and quant pivots? Um, let's let's go look actually. Well, you just go here and then what'll happen is you will see, you know, again, if you want if you if you already have this and you're like, okay, I got the tools, but I really want to, you know, I want to spend time with John. That sounds funny me saying that, but you know, on Saturday and during the live trading and really hone in on what he's doing here because you know i'm pretty excited about it um then there's a, there's a whole different kind of package there so just sign in the 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 computer or the website will say oh you've already bought the indicators awesome so here's your deal so do that and again if you if you've got these and you haven't been using them or you're not using them the way i showed you i highly encourage you to do the class and live trading with me because the stuff i'm going to show you is going to blow your mind i mean it's just i, I just I, I kind of feel bad that it's like, oh, I thought trading was supposed to be hard. So if you like trading to be hard, that's cool. I get it. I was like that for a long time, too. Um, why do I need this if I already have quick hits? Um, that's a good question. Well, so the quick hits, um, well, I'm not sure how much of the presentation you saw. <laughs> uh, let's look at Caterpillar right here. So if you've already got quick hits and, you know, if you basically anytime you get to like H2, there's a 95% chance it's going to hold and the trade's going to fail. So when I see something like this, you know, I'm buying puts, I'm selling call credit spreads. Um, sometimes by the time you wait for all the confirmations, it's already on its way. So the quant pivots is you get in now, like with half a position. And then once you start to see the quick hits, then you can, you know, add to it if you want to. But there's a big difference between getting a, um, like some quick, I don't take every quick hits. Like, yeah, I'm going to take this if I get a quick hits. But, you know, if it's right in the middle, uh, you know, I'm not going to take it. I, I want it to be against, so that I guess that's the biggest difference. I'm only taking it against the levels. I'm not just taking any random quick hits uh, signal. Um, how about an option for just a class, not the live training? So definitely call or email support. I'm sure they can uh, figure something out there. If Saturday doesn't work, will we have access for a replay? Yes, indeed. So someone else just asked too, I can't do this Saturday. When's the next time you're going to do it? I'm never doing this again. So the whole idea of doing this class is to record it. It's there. And so, um, so if you can't be there Saturday, I'd still get it because once it goes into the store, the price goes way up and that way you can just watch the recording at your leisure. Is it naive to think that I could put on a zero DTE iron condor at the daily quant pivots level for the day and be successful over time? No, John, it's a really good question and it's not naive. It's a, it's a good question. Um, let's, so the, the answer to that though is where are you putting it? And so let's look at the SPX here, right? So so if we look at today and say, let's just say that today you decide, okay, right before the Fed, I'm going to place an iron condor um, at uh, H1 and L1. And of course, if you did that, you got max loss, right? So however, 70% of the time, and all these, by the way, have statistics that you can look at, it will stay in between here. Of course, you know, today was Fed day, so we kind of knew it'd be a little bit more volatile. That being said, one of the things I like to do, okay, and this is a kind of a cool trick, is that you can come in here and just say, you know what, on the daily quant pivots, I want to see um, what tomorrow's is going to look like. I know we're not open yet, but where is it going to be? Okay, so I can hit these projections. All right, so now I can scrunch this down a little bit. So now what you can do is at the close, okay, at the close here for the next day, because there's going to be more premium overnight, right? Then I can do an iron condor, um, like at 44.40, you know, 44.50, and then, you know, 43.55, uh, you know, basically outside of these levels, because price is going to stay contained in there 96% of the time. 
that's I like doing that. And I do I do that. So that's how I do it with iron condors. Um, <laughs> did that show up? I don't know. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, Lorna, I don't know what the priority tab is. Sorry. I don't know what I did there. But anyway, that was that's what you do on there. Oh, Lorna, sorry. I know what you're saying. Dirt. <laughs> uh, I only have two brain cells uh, going tonight. Yeah, okay, Christian, great question. So last Friday, um, you know, we did have a move below L2, right? You know, I think like right here, whatever day it was. And the answer is yes, that happens 6% of the time. So that's where you get into position sizing and stuff like that too. You know, like this is, an, uh, this is a walk-up update. This only happens 6% of the time. So how we deal with this is we also read the internals. Um, and I'll show you that during the class. So um, on that day, what was it, Tuesday? So, you know, there's days where you don't fight the internals like that. And that was it this day. I'm not quite sure. But so on days like this where you've got all the ticks going higher like this, it's called a walk-up day. So those are days where once, you know, once you kind of get through something like this, you're like, oh, well, it's a walk-up day. All right, great. So there are, these are called like gamma squeezes. And again, but it only happens 6% of the time, but you can recognize it like that. Most of the time, you're going to see something a little bit more mixed like that. Um, you know, the next day we had a walk down day. That's what a walk down day looks like. Uh, and I'll give you guys a copy of this during the class as well. So yeah, just things like that. Um, why call it a two hour period? So we ha every two hours they readjust. So that's what I mean by a two hour period. Yeah. So it. Um, yeah. Okay. So if it blows, so that's what the quant pivots. I mean, blah blah blah. So if it does blow through, okay, so what do you do? Well, that's when you use the quick hits. So the only time on something like this, what I'm looking for to short is I'm waiting for one of these to cross below zero, okay? And that's, um, so as you're coming along here, so this is just telling you that it's turning, but there's no crosses below zero. And, and what I'm looking for is this 20X to cross below zero. So if it doesn't cross below zero, I'm not taking the opposite side of it versus, um, you know, like, uh, let's see, what was the other day here? Da, da, da. There was a day where we were down here at, was it there? Oh, here. So, you know, here it's like the market's like falling, falling, falling. Oh my God. Am I going to buy it here? I don't know. I mean, is this thing gonna is this thing gonna go or not? But once the twenty crosses back above above zero, you're in the clear. So that's what I'm. That's why I like this combination. You don't blindly you don't blindly have to do this on days where it's a little scary. You know, like you know, and up here it's like, oh, we're going, we're going, oh, twenty x. So that's that's why you combine these because then you don't have to you know worry about getting run over by a freight train or something like that. If it's a quiet day, then yeah, you know, I'm just gonna take it. But you know, there's days when it's like a little bit more volatile, right? Uh, why not just use the four hour versus the two? It's not a bad idea, Peter. You know, it's just, it just depends on, you know, what kind of uh, trading you're doing. So I do use the four hour on the S&P futures. Um, I've just found that the two hour on the, on the SPX works great. The, the four hour is not going to be hugely different, right? So that's okay too. Um, well, the success rate at uh, L2 and H2 is 94%. Can you explain the difference between a trend rotation regular versus squeeze rotation? I just want the simplest one to work with. Yeah. So I would definitely will cover that more in the class, Greg. But if you're not sure, so there's three. There's trend rotation regular, trend rotation standard deviation, trend rotation squeeze. The simplest one is just the regular trend rotation. So tre trend rotation regular, that's kind of the one I use the most. Um, that's in between. The, the SD one's a little faster. And the squeeze one is a little slower, um, but I kind of if you're if you're trying to figure out 
uh, just use reg. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So Kelvin Ho. So exactly. So I notice there's different levels, ES versus SPX. Yes. So I watch them both. And on ES, I do the four hour. And on SPX, I do the two hour just for that reason. So yeah, you're just, it's a 24 hour market versus a six and a half hour market. Is this only for day trading or the or does the system work for swings as well? Great, great question. So let me find, uh, let me find the chart I'm looking for. So it's a purposely black screen there for a second. Okay, so here is what I use for swing trading. So this is the Qs, it's a daily chart and I've got the, weekly there's the weekly sandbox okay and guess what we're going down to l1 on the weekly sandbox are we going to get down to l2 be fantastic guess what though if we get down there i'm getting out of our shorts that's for damn sure and then we can see bigger picture here's the monthly levels okay so on something like this i'm kind of looking at all right are we going to be able to get down to monthly l1 in the event of a panic, we get to monthly L2. That's rare, by the way, but when it happens, you buy it, okay? Um, let me see if I can find it on here because we got down to one of those. But same thing here. When you get to, look, we were rallying. Everybody's really bullish. You're not getting through monthly. Uh, you're not getting through monthly H2. You know, I, I haven't seen it happen yet. So that's a place where it's just like, you know, that's where you take profits and, you know, all, all, all those things. And then when you get down here to monthly L2, when it seems like it's the end of the world, okay, guess what? You ain't going below that either. So that's the area where if you're short, get out and start looking for a, a move higher. So yes, absolutely um, for swing trades as well. And that's what I use. Yeah. How do the voodoo lines work with this? Look, I love the voodoo lines and I want to know where they are. So today... Uh, you know, we were consolidating here around 44.54. Guess what? There's a skyline and we kind of fell and we kept going. So kind of this skyline here kind of lined up a little bit with h 2 it. So I, I want to know where they are. Absolutely. Uh, do you teach how to do credit spreads? So that's a good question. Um, credit spreads are pretty easy. And at the class, if we don't have it included, uh, we do have an options 101 kind of a thing, and I'll make sure you get a copy of it. Yeah, and I just, I and I started off trading. You know, I, I you know I'd do futures, and then for a long time I would just buy calls and buy puts, and I thought people who did credit spreads were idiots. And then at some point I realized why they're doing credit spreads. You know, my attitude was if you think it's going to go up, buy a call because if it if you're right, you're going to make the most amount of money. Well, think how many times you're not right or the market doesn't do exactly what you want. Credit spreads are way more forgiving. One of the easiest ways to improve the equity curve of your account, to improve your profitability, to improve your consistency is to never buy a call or a put again and just to sell call credit spreads if you're bearish and sell put credit spreads if you're bullish. And it can trade it can that in and of itself can can change your game right there. No, the quant levels are a look back, Pamela. So they go back. It studies all the price action and makes adjustments day by day. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, the quant pits, well, that includes the Saturday class and the live trading as well. Um, do you expect the tools to work for day trade when the market shifts behavior? Yeah. So SPI, I wasn't using this as much and I didn't, I wasn't using this in 2020, but I've gone back and overlaid this on 20 in 2020. And, um, you know, believe it or not, you real same thing. You didn't get through, you didn't get through H2 more than, you know, uh, 94% of the time. So the levels, the levels adjusted. So it had been great to know that there were a lot of times I remember having big profits and then the next day, you know, the markets would just kind of shit the bed. So even in highly uptrending markets where, you know, if look, if, if, if a weekly squeeze fires, I'm going to be more prone to do some more, you know, swing trades. But um, this helps me know where to take, you know, 
where to take levels off and things like that too. And there's so many choppy days, even in a strong market, you know, up or down, there's just gonna be days where there's just, oh, there's nothing to do. Well, with this stuff, there's plenty to do. Um, why do I need this if I already have quick hits? I think I already talked about that in terms of being able to uh, kind of leg in uh, with the um, with the quant pivots. Yeah, we already talked about that one. Uh, but, but can you trade futures instead of options? Yes, yeah, so I do futures. I'm short futures tonight based on quick hits and quant pivots. I'm, I'm a fan of futures. I typically will uh, buy or sell futures or credit spreads. Um, I, not as much will I buy a call or buy a put or do debit spreads. So that's if I'm going to do directional, I, I prefer futures. I will do long calls and long puts sometimes. Um, and, you know, I've got a list of, you know, guidelines and rules that I use for those as well. What tool provides for probability data like there is a 92% probability? Yeah, that's the quant pivots. So you can go, the nice thing is, is that you can go and you can get uh, data. So whatever you're looking at. So on this one, um, if you go back, in this case, 531 days, it'll actually analyze whatever you're looking at and say, okay, you know, in this case, um, there was a close below L2 6.8% of the time. So it's just telling you know, over 531 instances, periods, it only closed below L2 6.8% of the time. So you can look at that on whatever you're looking at and see what the stats are. Some are different. Some are, that's, but that's, it's, a between, it's typically between, I would say, it's very commonly in between about 5 and 7%. Sometimes it's lower. You know, you might find a stock or a market on a time frame where it's like, man, it just can't get through L2 or it can't get through H2. So on anything you're looking at, you're able to look at the statistics for however far back you want. And that's kind of nice. I don't have them on most of the time because I know, you know, what they are. Uh, but I can come over here and just say, you know what? Okay. You know, for the for the four hours on the S&Ps, let's show the study. And I want to show statistics and, you know, how, how far back, you know, I want to see. And then I can just kind of see. And it's like, okay, well, geez, on the S&Ps on the four hour, um, it's only been able to close below L2 4.7% of the time. You know, that's that's some good data. It's been able to close above H2 6.3% of the time. So interestingly enough, L2 holds a little bit better as support, all right, than um, H2. So you can do that on any on anything. I, you know, once I get the gist of it, I kind of just, you know, I turn it off because it gets in the way, but you can look at it. Um how are the quant pivot levels different from the Keltner channels? So the Keltner channels move and flow with the markets and um, they change a lot, the quant pivots, you know, if that makes sense. But here, here's the most, I think, confusing thing about them. Um, if I can find them, this is ES, right? So that's not going to be on there. Uh, this one is ES. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to find. The 30 minute one. Oh, there. So here's the SPX, right? So if we're looking at like today, OK, if you're looking at today going like, OK, I'm going to buy I'm going to buy this Keltner channel because there's support. Well, it just, if the market goes really far, guess what the Keltner channels do? They're like, oh, let's just move with you. So it was here, right, at 44.20. And it's like, oh, let's, let's go, let's drop 20 points. Let's just go with you. These don't move like that. You know, it's, no, it's, that's the level. So, you know, they're great when the market's really quiet, but on those bigger moves, um, you know, they'll just kind of move with the price. So I like them both. Um, can you please share more about the October Orlando event? Yes. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So, and this is just kind of like a one, and this, there's the money show that's going to happen right after this. So we'll be doing some talks at the money show. So, um, and with this, you get, these are presentations that I did and Henry did. You'll get copies of these. If you're not familiar with portfolio margin, if you've got a larger account, that's a really, that's a gold mine. So that's just kind of a class on, on how to, on how and what you can do with that. 
Uh, Unbalanced Butterflies are amazing, especially in the last hour. Uh, Henry does a great class on those. Those are kind of a little more complicated and confusing strategy, but once you understand it, it's fantastic. And basically what we'll do is um, for the VIP, we're gonna have a poker tournament. That's, that's it's a really great way to learn money management. Even if you've never played before, that's fine. And then just kind of, you know, some face time together. And then we'll just be uh, the next day, we'll all be kind of talking through uh, some of the main strategies that we're using. And the nice thing is, you know, you get to be able to kind of check out of your busy day to day and, and spend a, a solid day and a half with a group of traders. And a lot of times you get a lot of insights. When I want to learn something, I like to go to a live event. I don't like to do Zoom or anything like that. I go to a live event. I get out of my busy life. I immerse myself in the material. And when you do that, you kind of unconsciously start making these connections because you're immersed in it. You're not getting all these interruptions that you wouldn't otherwise be able to make. And so I always encourage people that if you really want to do this, that's just a great way. And, you know, you get to meet other traders, which is cool, too. Yeah. Okay. Hillary, great question. Would this be good for something for somebody that would be new to trading? You know, you went pretty fast, you know, what you're saying, you know, kind of some of it went over my head. Yes. Yeah, so the nice thing about this is that once you set it up, you know, it's a really, and if you're newer, um, you know, there's, there's less nuances you have to worry about, uh, frankly. I mean, since, you know, I've been doing this a long time, I'm like, okay, let's look at the ticks and let's do this. But you can set it up with like, you know, just on the daily charts to get started. And, you know, here's the two things you're looking for. And uh, yeah, I really, I mean, this is what I teach my kids. It's just, it's simple. And, you know, Avery, my daughter came in today and she's like, she's really into skincare right now. And she's ordering stuff from this site she found in Korea. And I got my American Express, American Express calling me like, you know, your credit card is being used in Korea, right? I'm like, I know, but you know, we don't give her the money. So she comes in and she trades. And so she had to make like 120 bucks so she could get her skincare routine. And she did it on one SPX trade. And doing exactly, you know, it's a, it's a little simpler setup. You know, she doesn't really care about, you know, she's just, she's just like, I just, you know, I just want to, she's mostly likes the arrows, you know, on the quick hits. And so I thought that was kind of cool. Um, last year you traded quick hits without the quant pivots. Yeah. So good, good question, Matt. Now it's not that the environment changed. I just, for some reason, I don't know why I never really put them together. I just thought they were different. And then when I combined them, it was just like this nuclear explosion of simplicity went off and it's like, oh, well, you know, and technically, you know, it's like the, you know, the quant pivots it's in the quant pivots. It's like, okay, well, you know, is L1 going to hold or we're going to L2? Well, that's where the quick hits would come in. They'd kind of tell me like, oh, we're totally turning here. Okay. Awesome. So it just got to be a really, and I'm not, honestly, I don't know why I didn't pick it up earlier. I feel kind of like a, an idiot. It's just like more recently where I started watching them together. How many trades do you do each day? Typically, um, I love it when I only do one, but I typically, it seems like if it's, if I can make my, you know, my goal on one trade, which happens, um, but typically, but then sometimes there's just another trade that sets up. Um, but I would say on average one to three trades a day. All right. All right, guys and gals. So lots of great questions here. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this. I'm going to go rest. <laughs> we got a lot of trading to do tomorrow. Uh, for those of you in the gold room, I will be doing the close on Friday as well. And then remember on Saturday, we'll be doing the class, which will be a lot of fun. A lot of great examples this week that we're going to digest uh, and go through. We'll create all kinds of fun little checklists and stuff like that too. And of course, it'll be fun. So I'm going to uh, thank you guys and gals for attending tonight. I will leave you with this page. If you have any questions, obviously, please reach out to us. The class is coming up. If you don't have the tools, I don't see any reason on, on the planet Earth why you wouldn't want them. And then if you do have them and you're comfortable with it, awesome. And if you're like, you know what? I want to hang out and let's really dial down on how you're using the strategy and combining them. We can do that on Saturday. And uh, keep in mind, obviously, there's um, different prices. If you've already got the tools, just log into the site and you will see those. All right. So you guys, everybody have a thank you for joining us tonight. Have a great night. For those of you in the room, I will be posting updates tomorrow on our trades. And of course, see you again on the mic on Friday.